Today we're going to be talking about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Now first we need to remember our square root property. So remember that when you have an equation with an x squared in it, we square root both sides, not forgetting your plus and minus. You're not forgetting your plus and minus. And I kind of prefaced this in the earlier video. Okay, so keep that in mind. Don't forget your plus and minus. Okay, so solving again this first type of equation, keep the x squared. You need to isolate that x squared. So I'm going to subtract 11 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 4. Now we square root both sides because square root undoes the x squared. Don't forget your plus and minus. Break 12 down into perfect squares. Now remember, this is plus and minus root 4 times root 3. So that's why our answer is plus or minus 2 root 3, because it's 2 times root 3. The 2 doesn't go in front of the plus and minus sign. Now the next one. Now this one's deceiving. Notice how on the left side here that that's a perfect square trinomial. So look out for those perfect square trinomials. That's going to factor to x plus 6 squared. Then we square root both terms. So I have x plus 6 equals plus or minus root 28. Now pull out any perfect squares we have. 28 is 7 times 4, so a 2 can be pulled out in front. Now notice how it's 2 times root 7, because I changed that root 28 into root 4 times the square root of 7. Now we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So really what we have there is we have two answers. We have negative 6 plus 2 root 7 and negative 6 minus 2 root 7. So we really have two answers. Next one. Again, making sure you're isolating this x minus 7 squared term. So I need to subtract 6 first before I divide by 5. Then I divide by 5. It's 27. I don't know why I wrote 24. I just looked at my notes. 27. There we go. Now, we square root. So x minus 7 is going to be equal to plus or minus 27 is 9 times 3. So I can pull out a 3, root 3. Then we can add that 7 over to get those two answers. Okay, completing the square. When you multiply out x plus b squared, so x plus b times x plus b, we use FOIL, first, outer, inner, and last. So when you have x plus b squared, we have this. So now when we want to factor a polynomial to make it a perfect square trinomial, this 2b here is what 6 equals. So 2b equals 6. To figure out what b is, I need to divide that by 2. 
But what number goes there? B squared goes there. So B is 3, but then I need to square it so that number is 9. So what goes there is B over 2 squared. So then when I factor that, when I factor that, we get x plus 3 squared. It's basically what b over 2 is, what this middle term 6 over 2 is. Okay, completing the square, I need to find the number that I would add in here to complete the square, and then I need to factor it. So, we take the whatever the middle number is, 14 divided by 2 squared. Now, I didn't take the negative with it, because when I square... This number is going to become positive anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Once I square that, I get 49. So then from there to factor that, it's x minus 14 divided by 2, or whatever the square root of 49 is, which is 7. Okay, so what we add in here. We take 9, divide it by 2, and square it. Now, I sure hope you're not pulling out your calculators, because you know me, I would want this as a fraction. So 9 divided by 2 squared. I can't simplify 9 over 2, so I square the top and I square the bottom. Now this factors to x plus. Keep in mind what I said up here. Notice the relationship between the 49 and the 7. It's the square root of whatever that number is. Or, notice what I said about the 7 and the 14. It's half of that number. So it's either the, so what I'm going to add in here, when I factor it to make it a perfect square trinomial, it's either 9 over 2 or the square root of 81 over 4. I really have that answer right there. It's going to be 9 over 2. Okay, quadratic equations by completing the square. And yes, I want these steps in your notes. So take a minute, pause the video, write the steps down. Okay. Collect all variable terms on one side of the equation and constants on the other. So for example 5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 12x over. I'm going to leave some space. And the other side is 20. As needed, divide both sides by a. Since our a is 1, we need the x squared coefficient to be 1. We need that x squared coefficient to be 1. The x squared coefficient is 1 in this case, so we don't need to worry about step 2. Now we complete the square by adding b over 2 squared to both sides. So let's calculate that real quick over to the side. 12 divided by 2 squared, well that's 6 squared, 36. Because it's an equation, I need to add that value to both sides. Our equation needs to stay equal. Now, I like to say you've rigged the equation. You've rigged this equation on the left side so that it factors to x minus 6 squared. You've made it so it factors. What do I have on the right side? I have 16. Now we square root both sides. So we have x minus 6 equals plus or minus 4. 
which really means we have two equations. We have x minus 6 equals a positive 4, and x minus 6 equals a negative 4. So now, solve both of those equations. On the top one, when I add 6 to both sides, we get 10. When I add 6 in the bottom equation, we get 2. So we have our answer of 10 and 2. Okay, our next example, solve by completing the square. Again, I need my variables on one side. I need my numbers on the other. Okay, you look at what your middle term is. The coefficient on that middle term is 4. Over to the side, I do 4 divided by 2 squared. That works out to be 4. So I add 4 to both sides. Now again, you've made it so this equation should factor. It has to factor to x plus 2 squared. And then we get this is equal to 16. Now to get rid of our squared, we square root both sides. Don't make the common mistake. This is plus and minus 4. Now I want you to set up two equations. I want you to set up that x plus 2 equals a positive 4 and x plus 2 equals a negative 4. Or else you're going to get confused and you're going to give me an answer I don't like. So make sure you set up the two equations especially if you're paying attention in the video. Set up two equations, because I'm going to mark it wrong. And for those of you guys that are actually watch the videos and pay attention, you're going to get it right. Those of you guys that don't watch the videos, you can't hear what I'm saying, or don't listen to them, oh well. X is going to be equal to 2 for the bottom one, for the one on the left, I should say. And then when I subtract 2, we get negative 6. So that's our answer, 2 and negative 6. Okay, there are your three lesson questions for the day. And please make sure those are submitted on time.